What's someone who should probably not be allowed out in civil society? My Tucker Carlson! <laughs> Cody! <laughs> Katie! Guests of Behind the Bastards. We've not done a BTB on um on Tucker Carlson. Cody, you basically did. You had a massive Some More News episode on the guy. It's a big yeah. one, yeah. Uh, why is Tucker Carlson, I believe? <laughs> yeah. That's what it's called. Uh, yeah. We've done like one a follow-up or two, titles. but mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, he's a guy, man. Yeah. Um, all I would say all you need to really know about Tucker Carlson, aside from like the Swanson airship and all that kind of stuff, um, and uh his what, his son Buckley, I think. Anyway, it doesn't oh matter. Oh my right. god. Uh, and, really? And, yeah, his letters to yeah. Uh I, also, I've never met a Buckley that we needed in the world. And also just you know that he doesn't it. shorten mm-hmm. it to Buck. It's Buckley no, it's Buck- all oh, the yeah. time. Uh wrote a letter to Hunter Biden thanking him for like helping him his son get into his yeah, school. Anyway, yeah. does, that's one of my favorite matter. Tucker facts. <laughs> Um, when Tucker was working in print journalism, uh, he was getting a, he called it a takeout hot dog, <laughs> um, is what he called it. Uh, my God. But, yeah. You know, he's, he's literally Come wearing on, the bow ties. Man. He's writing this, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, he got a takeout, uh, takeout hot dog. Yeah. Went back the to the man office. of the people. Yeah. And somebody in the office was basically saying, um, uh, they need somebody go- to go on TV, uh, to talk about the OJ trial. They need an expert in the OJ trial um to go and talk about it uh and their oj expert can't do it um can you and he was just like yes um (laughs) and in the book he's like i Uh didn't know anything about the oj trial wasn't following it at all i immediately said yes to get on tv and then he did and that's like the start of his career on television and i think it's just so illustrative of like who he is yeah and his like his entire career is just that moment of like who's an oj expert to go on tv oh i am i'll do it um after getting a takeout hot dog you know, I um, years ago for the the nonfiction book I wrote, A Brief History of Ice, I talked to um, one of the two guys who coined the the Dunning Kruger effect, um, and I, I I also talked to the author of a paper about uh, I think the title of the paper was the evolution of overconfidence, and it was kind of it's part of this body of body of research is trying to answer the question. And I think people are broadly familiar with the Dunning Kruger effect, which is a, a fairly durable f- finding in neuroscience that people who are least competent in given tasks tend to overestimate their own competence the most. That's kind of the the briefest way of describing it. Um, mm-hmm. And so there's this question that, that people, scientists in this field have, which is like, why, right? Because it does, it kind of seems, if you're just kind of assuming on its surface that like, it would be a bad a, a bad trait evolutionarily to be overconfident because then you'll get yourself in situations that you can't handle and you'll you'll die horribly right right, right. What, mm-hmm. but like it, i guess it could be like psychologically protective it, it, you know it, yeah. but like that's not, that, i don't know if that's enough right <laughs> there there's um the point that that was made to me as i was trying to like understand why this still exists is that if you've got a resource that two different individuals are competing over, right? And they're more or less evenly matched, or at least they can't know whether or not. Because, right, if you're, like, standing next to a guy who wants to fight who's roughly your size, you have no idea who's going to win or not, unless you're, like, you know, you don't, it's, you, they're a black box, right? You don't know, like, who is who is better at, at fighting or whatever. Um, so if you... The, the 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 individual that is more confident in their ability to take that resource, if they just go for it and grab it, one of two things will happen. Either the other individual will fight back, in which case they either win or lose the fight, or the other individual chooses not to fight and you get the resource. Mm-hmm. And statistically, that's a pretty good bet to make enough yeah, of the time is. that overconfidence is an extremely common trait, um, not just among human beings. And I think it's also interesting that like that is how fascism works, right? They just keep grabbing. Mm-hmm. And until you fight back, they're, they're just going to keep taking more and more, which is why, um, you know, we could talk about certain shootings that have occurred recently in the city of Portland. But um, I I think that like fundamentally Tucker is a perfect embodiment of that fact, um, both in his career where it's just like, well, yeah, if you just try to do shit that you're not competent to do and, you know, hope that you can bullshit your way through it, sometimes you will. And then you make tens of millions of dollars. And also if you just keep pushing further and further as, as a fascist and trying to incite more violence against your enemies, um, and no one stops you, then you get everything you want, which in Tucker's... Literally- yeah. 
It's literally Sorry. fuck around and find out. Yeah. Like, just like evil. <laughs> it, it is it is really evil. It's interesting because we're I wonder what he's saying in his texts, you know, in 2023. Um, but in 2020, there's a degree of which you can see like fear in him of what he's doing, like which makes sense. Yeah, of what me, he's he helping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because he doesn't know if it's going to work out for him or not. Um, but it does. I, I There's a degree to which I find it. And maybe he's more confident now. I don't know. There's a degree to which I find a little bit of it comforting because it's like, oh, he knows he could lose. Like he doesn't actually know how this is going to work out. And he's he's second guessing himself and his mm -hmm. his colleagues. Um, and and maybe that maybe that means that there's hope. Um, maybe not. You know, <laughs> it's 2023. It's well, never right, a it good idea matter, to bet on he's, hope. He's yeah. in it. Right. It doesn't matter yeah. how confident he is necessarily. Yeah. yeah now. It, yes. Um, so, yeah. Um, at any rate, uh, we are back into the story of how Fox News handled the election lies. Uh, was it well? about this document. Uh, I remember it was well. Uh, yeah, well is a good way to describe well. it. Okay, good. So while Murdoch... I'd expect nothing less. <laughs> yeah. okay, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, while Murdoch apparently went to pretty great lengths to curry favor with the Trump campaign during the election, he does not seem to have to appear to have wanted to push the stolen election line after November 2nd. But within Fox News itself, Murdoch had a serious problem. He had hired a stable of hosts who were, let's say, either crazy assholes or evil enough that all they cared about was their bottom line. And they saw this as the best way to do it. There's also a degree of like fear of Trump that they all have. Mm -hmm. Internal discussion. And these people could not be entirely controlled, right? Rupert Murdoch has a lot of power. He does not have absolute control over Sean Hannity or Tucker Carlson or J Judge Jeanine or any of these other people. Because they're all multi-million dollar businesses. They have a lot of leverage, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Although, so, what, wasn't mm -hmm. that, didn't uh, Tucker Carlson at one point say on like some like radio show he was Rupert Murdoch's bitch? Wait, did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's Googling it right but now. But that was more yeah. back in his shock days, though, wasn't it? Right, right. Well, yeah. right, right now he's like mm -hmm. making it. Um, <laughs> I just yeah. like that popped into my head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean... A little bit now. I mean, because it, it, it definitely the de the depiction you get from these internal comms is not one in which he's fully Murdoch's bitch. Although it's also one in which, uh, you know, I don't know. I was actually kind of surprised by how comparatively toothless it seems like Murdoch was. Maybe just because mm. of how much Fox is a talent driven business. Um, but yeah, there's, there's internal discussions that Dominion posts that are between Fox executives that are just like this parade of worries, particularly that Sean Hannity is not co like controllable. Yeah. Um, they went so far and they did take some actions to try and mitigate this. Judge Janine Pirro's November 7th show was canceled because as Fox executive David Clark said, her guests are all going to say the election is being stolen. And if she <laughs> pushes back at all, it will just be token. Um, mm. and then it's like token dot 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 and then like two sentences are redacted so I don't know what the fuck else they were saying about <laughs> oh, Judge Janine. I wish I knew. I know um, there's some tantalizing redactions here and then we get to this lovely bit. Quote, as Fox producer Justin Wells described, they took her off because she was being crazy. Optics are bad <laughs> but she is crazy. <laughs> So he's like, oh. the optics of us questioning the election lies, conspiracy theory are bad, but also this pitch is nuts. Oh my this God. is a situation you find when you hire people you know are inflammatory just to be inflammatory. It's Pandora's box. They've opened Pandora's yeah. box and it's they can't control up. them. No, they cannot. So th these mild attempts at responsibility did not extend to letting the network call the election for Biden first. They waited until all of the other networks had finished. Viewers revolted. Rupert Murdoch complained to Suzanne Scott that the company was, quote, getting creamed by CNN. Guess our mm. viewers don't want to watch it. Now, this is the point at which Tucker <laughs> Carlson. So, yeah, I, I fucking it's love so that. It's funny. It's just like, yeah, they don't yeah. like the results they're gonna sorry go ahead <laughs> yeah um i it's it's it is remarkable uh and at this point tucker carlson who'd kind of started out on like broadly speaking team reason like angry at the election conspiracies takes a turn 
Carlson texted his producer, do the executives understand how much credibility and trust we've lost with our audience? We're playing with fire for real. An alternative like Newsmax could be devastating to us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, they know exactly yeah. what's going on. Yeah, they so know funny. exactly like the, yeah. the shit that they're in. Yeah, um, yeah they're in a bad the, way. Bad the situation, The freaks we yeah. spawned might overtake us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's very, very funny. On November 8th, the day after the election was called, uh, Maria Bartiromo had Sidney Powell on again to talk about Dominion software, um, which she a- alleged had an algorithm that had stolen the election from Trump. Bartiromo knew ahead of time that Powell was going to spread conspiracy theories about the company because Powell had sent her a document the day before titled Election Fraud Info. Now, this is the core of all of the information about the Dominion and um, uh, Smartmatic or whatever. Like, this is this is the actual nut of data that Sidney Powell has, that all of her claims are based on, right? So basically, everything that Fox is going to magnify about the election conspiracy comes from this document that Powell has been sent from an anonymous source titled Election Fraud Info. Hmm. Now, for one thing, (laughs) Powell describes this anonymous source as pretty wackadoodle, right? Like, and what does that mean exactly? I bet you're wondering, what is from Sidney Powell, what does the sentence or the statement pretty wackadoodle mean? Here's how the motion describes the uh, Election Fraud Info document. In addition to promoting lies about Dominion, the sender claimed that Justice Scalia was purposefully killed at the annual Bohemian Grove (laughs) camp during a week-long human hunting expedition, and that former Fox News CEO Roger Ailes, who died in 2017, and Rupert Murdoch secretly huddle most days to determine how best to portray Mr. Trump as badly as possible. The author continued, Who am I, and how do I know all of this? I had the strangest dream since I was a little girl. I was internally (laughs) decapitated. Oh, Cody, you got to hear this. I was internally decapitated, and yet I live. The wind tells me I'm a ghost, but I don't believe it. What? (laughs) That's right. You don't believe it. This is the source. Yeah, this is it. All of this. Let's hear this is this is the source that three or four billion dollars in lawsuits are based (laughs) around. Now. At another point in this email, the, uh, this anonymous source claims to be able to, quote, time travel in a semi-conscious state. Um, oh, sure, yeah. Which is also, I think As that just means do. dreaming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking incredible. Like, to, to, to know where it all comes to, it's not even Sydney making stuff up or just pretending to be a black blo- box. She shares this email with Fox hosts, right? So that she can inform them what she's going to bring up. So they know that the source of a lot of these election claims is an internally decapitated woman who the wind (laughs) tells is a ghost. (laughs) And can time travel in a semi-conscious state? Yeah, in a semi-conscious state. Very impressive. Yeah, Some very interesting Mm -hmm. info. Yeah, I mean, Cody, I don't think any of your sources can time travel in a semi-conscious state, so... Not recently. I hope she ones. includes all this in her resume Future and like ones. cover mm-hmm. letters when yeah. she's applying to jobs. <laughs> in her what CV. About me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a t- travel in a semi conscious state. <laughs> um, interestingly, our friend David Bell puts that on his resume as well. Oh, so, right. You know yeah, what? That's true. Yeah. He does. That is true. I, he can. I'm wondering yeah. when I. Did David yeah. Bell write this letter? It, uh, yeah, no. It's, uh, no, he was he never internally that decapitated. That's um, right. That's right. Yeah. He would have shared that. No, he he sends me a uh, a, a cat scan of his neck every single week, uh, so I can I can confirm he has not been <laughs> internally decapitated. <laughs> Um, so Barter Remo, Jesus, what a stupid last name, was aware of the email and stated in her deposition that she knew that it was nonsense, but at no point on air did she mention that this email was the source of Powell's claims about Dominion, which had aired on Fox to millions of viewers. As Tucker Carlson texted that night, the software shit is absurd. Half our viewers have seen the Maria clip. And yeah, not wrong. Not wrong. Yeah, it's in, the the most interesting stuff in here to me is this behind the scenes glimpse at how Tucker communicates when he thinks he has a reasonable expectation of privacy because he seems equally preoccupied with how dumb the conspiracy is as he is with lambasting his colleagues for not adequately furthering the conspiracy theory, right? Yeah. Like he's pissed about both he's angry that that this conspiracy is taking off and he's even angrier when his his colleagues don't back it up on the air. Um 
What a weird position That's, for a giant asshole to be in. Yeah. <laughs> it is a bad, but it's that a, ba- would it's a be sticky his, one. That would be his position, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, of course, because there's wants, no yeah. personal responsibility. There's nothing like be angry about everybody, the options. But yeah, there are no What breaks. are the options There are no here? brakes on this ride he's on. It's just uh, he wants the drivers to guide it a little better. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's but it's not good stopping. Stuff. That's so interesting. Oh. He's definitely not stopping. On November 9th, Carlson told Suzanne Scott, Fox's CEO, directly, I've never seen a reaction like this to any media company. Kills me to watch it. Scott mm. took that message down the line, attacking her colleagues for having the arrogance to call Arizona. She expressed that it was astonishing that a top executive had signed off on the Arizona call, given that every executive's first job was to, quote, protect the brand. Mm. Oh, mm. that's their first job. It's oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's sure right. shit not reporting the news, Katie. <laughs> no, 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 it definitely isn't that. Yeah. I'm going to continue <laughs> from the uh, the motion. And on that day, day one, as Scott termed it, Fox executives made an explicit decision to push narratives to entice their audience back. Scott and Lachlan Murdoch exchanged texts about the plan going forward. Scott, viewers going through the five stages of grief. It's a question of trust. The AZ call was damaging, but we will highlight our stars and plant flags, letting the viewers know we hear them and respect them. Murdoch, yes, but needs constant rebuilding without any missteps. Scott, yes, today is day one and it's a process. Mm, so funny. Oh, pretending they remarkable. respect their audience is very yeah. funny. Yeah, and that respecting their audience means embracing the lie their audience. Yeah, believes. exactly. Yeah, like yeah, yeah easing, yeah. easing yeah. them off the lie. Maybe we've got what? to respect our audience. That's so yeah. funny. I, I think the th- one of the things I find really compelling here is that like the the most honest any of them seems is when they are distraught that the audience is losing trust in them and so it's like i think they do feel bad that they didn't embrace the audience's insane conspiracy enough that like oh we let them down yeah they expected us to be as batshit as they are and we really fell down on the job there yeah yeah i mean yeah feeling upset that they can't that they're in this situation and they can't yeah yeah Yeah, that they that they failed their audience Yeah, we should have gone in harder mm-hmm. at the at the outset. It's so embarrassing we're not to let struggling your... right now. We should have been dumber and faster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I I do say that a lot myself. But you know who's as dumb and as fast as it's possible to be? Sponsors. Our sponsors. sponsors. They mm-hmm. are. They are as. They are as fast. It's the right as, amount. As uh, I don't know how to finish that sentence. Anyway, here's our fucking ads. <laughs> Ah, we are back. On November 9th, Neil Cavuto cut away from a White House press conference where Kaylee McEnany made unsubstantiated claims about election fraud. Neil told viewers that he could not in good conscience air her claims unless she had evidence to back them up, which is honestly more of a principled stand than I think any of us ever expected from Neil Cavuto. Absolutely surprising. (laughs) Yeah, shocking. The brand team at Fox panicked. Raj Shah, who headed the brand team, notified senior leadership that Cavuto represented a brand threat. Mm. Tied in with all this and with Tucker's reaction was an ever-present fear of Newsmax, which built over into the course of November. Fox execs and talent seemed to see Newsmax as a mortal threat to their continued profitability, which is funny because didn't it just get dropped from like, uh, what is it? Um... Was it Newsmax or the One News? The, yeah, the Direct one TV. News. Direct TV just dropped Newsmax because it didn't get oh. enough people watching it. Well, um, it's it interesting. Good, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I maybe Fox was. Uh, I don't know. May, it may it may have just been that like in the moment Newsmax was experiencing a surge, but it clearly didn't last. They're not doing well right now. Um, which is very funny also. Fuck all of those people. Quote, prior to November 8th, Fox executive David Clark testified that Newsmax was not a credible media outlet because, quote, their hosts were extremely one-sided, ignored the Mm. facts. They did not seem to care about telling the truth. They seemed to invest truly in conspiracy theories versus fact. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that'll do it. Wow, imagine (laughs) a news agency being like that, David. (laughs) Fucked up, huh? Mm. Um... 
On November 10th, Scott pointed out to senior Fox executives a note from analyst Kyle Goodwin on Newsmax's ride. Fox executive Porter Berry responded, just pulled up uh, up Newsmax's show and they're hitting Cavuto. They are just whacking us. Smart on their part. Lauren Peterson added, they definitely have a strategy across all shows to try and target and steal our viewers. And this is also really compelling to me just because, like, at, at number one, obviously, at no point is even ideology a primary concern. Like, the concern is the competition, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's it's pure it's pure business. And there's almost this, like, I can respect the degree to which they're good at fucking us over. Um, yeah, we would do that, yeah, too. We would know. do that, too. We, we and, and it's a shame to us that we weren't smart enough to do it faster, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Fox executives talk about Newsmax the way the rest of us talk about Fox, which is one of the most entertaining things in the document. Fox President Jay Wallace describes Newsmax as truly an alternative universe that can't be ignored. He then adds in a message to Suzanne Scott that he is trying to get everyone to comprehend we are on war footing. And again, that's also uh, from the point I'm making about like ideology doesn't seem to come into it with these people. They're not at war with the Biden White House or Democrats. They're at war with other right wing media that might mm-hmm. steal their thunder. Yeah. Who's yeah out Fox Newsing them. Mm-hmm. It's very, very good, interesting. Cody. Yeah. Foxing. That I'm proud. I'm proud. Mm-hmm. Proud of you, Cody. You Thank know you. what? Yeah. Let's get on a call with the T-shirt people real quick. Yeah. Let's let's Go get them on print the one of those. So the T-shirt people, the T-shirt people, (laughs) everything that Fox does next is influenced by this feeling of being at war with Newsmax. This is what causes Tucker to make common cause with Sean Hannity in order to push the false claim that Dominion was the core of some grand fraud. The express purpose of backing this conspiracy theory was to bring viewers back from Newsmax. Quote, Hannity told Carlson and Ingram on November 12th, in one week and one debate, they destroyed a brand that took 25 years to build and the damage is incalculable. Tucker responded, it's vandalism. The hosts also discussed (laughs) the possibility of competition to Fox emerging. Hannity told them, serious money with serious distribution could be a real problem. IMHO, they need to address, but what I don't know. Tucker, that could happen. So, yeah. uh, Feel it. Feel that fear. Folks. Yeah, feel that feel that fear. It is nice to know that he can be afraid. It's a little brain bug moment there. Mm-hmm. Putting your hand on the goop stick that Tucker yeah. Carlson uses to suck the brains <laughs> out of your aunts and uncles. Yeah, it's afraid. It's afraid. Normally, normally I feel um, a little bit of empathy when an unlikable character, when you realize that, you know, they're afraid that, mm-hmm. you know, you, you humanize them. <laughs> no, nah, not this guy. Be no, afraid. I- I, I would not feel empathy if any, Tucker Carlson's asshole got sucked out of his backside by one of those no. one of those sucker things in a swimming the, pool, in a grain silo or, or something. Yeah, or a yeah. grain silo. Yeah, <laughs> I, let's let's grain silo the fucker. Um, did you guys grow up with that? That like that at, at your like those local suckers. pool that there was like yeah, oh yeah, exactly. a kid got their yeah, whole all legend. their guts sucked up, and then like mm-hmm. a Palinuk short story, right? Think, was it a Palinuk short I story? He, I think he ended up doing a short story about that urban legend, which I if, think is If anyone ever, ever yeah, I, w- I would definitely say, Cody, if there's a short story about getting your gut sucked out of your butt through a swimming pool, Chuck Palinuk wrote it. Would it would be Chuck Palinuk. <laughs> I think it's sure. literally called Guts, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I, beautiful. I'm going to read it now. Okay. Mm-hmm. But for the record, <laughs> I would think it was funny if that happened to Tucker. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. That same day, Laura Ingram's producer, Tommy Firth, texted a Fox executive responsible for overseeing her show. He complained, this Dominion shit is going to give me a fucking aneurysm. As many times as I've told Laura it's BS, she sees shit posters and Trump tweeting about it. The next (laughs) sentence or so is redacted, but the Fox executive responds, this is the Bill Gates microchip angle to voter fraud. The next day, he messages Firth again asking, how's it going with the kooks? (laughs) <laughs> oh. oh wow so they're both being like oh yeah laura's you know she's watching these shit posters she's tweeting about nonsense but the executive's like yeah you know this is something we can work with it's this bill gates microchip angle but applied to voter, voter oh, yeah, fraud we you can know make it work yeah God. how's it going are the crazy people biting um oh, this God. feels you're not done telling this story but this all feels really damning it's it, it very does <laughs> damning and evil. It feels evil. like people like should be locked it, up. <laughs> like we're we're we we have fun. We make mm-hmm. our jokes, but like 
honestly, the real life repercussions of this shit. Families yeah. destroyed. People kill yeah. themselves over this. There was yeah. just another like suicide of an entire family over this shit. Like this has destroyed so many lives. Like I I don't know. These people sh like the money is not enough. I mm -hmm. I don't see on a moral level. I don't see any argument as to why a lot of this shouldn't be criminally liable, but none of it is obviously, or ever will be. Um, Cause it's fine to do this. Uh, it's not fine to like yell at the Atlanta police after they shoot a guy, then you get charged with domestic yeah, terrorism, yeah. but this is cool. Um, yeah. So also on November 12th, Lou Dobbs took to the airways with Rudy Giuliani as guest. After Giuliani repeated his litany of false allegations against Dominion, Dobbs said on air, it's stunning. They have no ability to audit meaningfully the votes that are the votes that are cast because the servers are somewhere else. This looks to me like it is the end game to a four and a half year long effort to overthrow the president of the United States. While Dobbs uh, dug that hole deeper, Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity, and Tucker Carlson were in a group text thread together. And boy, that sounds like the worst group text I thread love, I can like, imagine. I want only that. <laughs> yeah. You want that? I, I want to see it all. That. You want to see, see you all don't... of it. Every breaking news story that happens, mm -hmm. I want to see just everything. I don't want to be on that thread in any way. But oh, gosh. I no. would love to read it for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, All I uh, I don't know. I'd like to be on there. Be like, hey guys, you know it's Friday. Uh, <laughs> I got some beers. Uh, the 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 liver of a child that was drowned to death in amaretto. You guys want to come over? You know, have some brews, eat a little bit. Um, I assume I assume when Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity, and Tucker Carlson hang out together, uh, they eat like the human equivalent of an ortolan. That's the that's the only <laughs> thing that <laughs> they don't even hide their shame from God, though. Tucker knows he's more powerful. Um, so, yeah, while Dobbs dug that hole deeper, Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity and Tucker Carlson are in their group chat. And Carlson shares a tweet by Fox reporter Jackie Heinrich. And Jackie was. One of the like three or four people at Fox who had a shred of integrity and she was she fact uh, Trump tweeted about Dominion, like sharing this Sidney Powell conspiracy and Jackie Heinrich fact checked it. She noted there is no evidence that any voting system deleted or lost votes. Carlson shares this and tells Hannity, please get her fired. Seriously. What the fuck? I'm actually shocked. It needs to stop immediately. Like tonight. It's measurably hurting the company. The stock price is down. Not a joke. Tucker then adds, I just went crazy on Mead over it. Hannity responds that he had already sent to Suzanne with a really? He then added, I'm three strikes. Wall is shit debate. Election night a disaster. Now this BS? Nope. Not gonna fly. Did I mention Cavuto? They're so pissed. <laughs> They're so pissed. So satisfying. <laughs> yeah, it, it does feel good a little bit. I can so, just see him. Mm, yeah. Now, Hannity next texts Suzanne Scott, who reached out to Fox as SVP of corporate communications, Irina Briganti. Quote, Sean texted me. He's standing down on responding, but not happy about this and doesn't understand how this is allowed to happen from anyone in news. She, Heinrich, has serious nerve doing this. And if it gets picked up, viewers are going to be further disgusted. By the next morning, Heinrich had deleted her fact-checking tweet. So I guess, uh. look... Again, you know, Heinrich had a little bit of a little bit of uh, 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 what do you what do you say? Courage or, or whatever. A yeah, chutzpah, but uh, not so tried. much that when her bosses yell at her, she doesn't delete oh, the yeah. tweet. Oh, yeah. As soon as Tucky uh, shows yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Winding well, little texts. I don't know. I, maybe one thing you could take from that is that, like, if you get caught telling the truth in right wing media, there's not like a job open for you in right. normal media. Whereas if you get caught lying in mainstream oh, yeah. media, you got a there's a job for you on. You. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I was at, putting myself, trying to put myself in that position. And it's like, he, yeah, I could see how you get intimidated. Yep. I would like to think I wouldn't cause I would make those series of choices where I was working at this place, mm. but you know, yeah, you know, there's this term you hear because of um, Hannah Arendt, the banality of evil, and she was talking yeah. about like Holocaust perpetrators, but it gets used a lot. I think it, I, I, I prefer to think of things a little differently, which is that like, it's not that evil is banal, it's that the vast majority of evil is perpetuated so that people can pay their mortgage. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that, and that's what that's what's going on here, and that's even what's going on with like like Tucker doesn't have a mortgage or whatever, but it's it's very much just about the bottom line, right? Like if the money for Tucker had been in being a, a liberal or left wing media personality, he would have been just as fine doing that. He doesn't yeah. care. Like, doesn't care. yeah. While this is going on, Dominion representatives are frantically contacting Fox News to try and correct these false allegations. In the first, like, two months that followed the election, they sent 3,600 messages to Fox representatives. Mm -hmm. Fox executive David Clark tells a colleague on November 14th, I have it tattooed on my body at this point. (laughs) LOL, super aware that we're we're lying criminally about a corporation. LMAO. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. R-O-F-L. Hope they don't sue us for $1.6 billion. (laughs) Tee-hee, tee-hee. Kissy face, yeah. One fun thing I learned reading this is that Fox does, in fact, have its own fact-checking department. Now, that's an astonishing thing to hear if you have watched a lot of Fox News. (laughs) You know what they call themselves? Mm. Fucking losers. No. (laughs) No, no, no. What did they call themselves? The Brain Room. (laughs) Oh shut my gosh. Up. I mean, don't shut up. But oh no. Goodness the brain and gracious. Room. That is yeah. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Love it. What what facts are they checking? They just don't That's care. A, They'll check wait, the facts so that they know. Katie and report the opposite. I would love to answer that question for you, but as soon as the motion notes that Fox's fact-checking department is called the Brain Room, the next two full paragraphs are redacted. Oh, what? Come on. <laughs> You're killing me, redactions. Again, there's some there's some juicy shit that's f- black barred in this. It's the funniest place to put redaction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can think it's, of it. It's, it's really, there is a degree of comedic timing from some of these Dominion lawyers. Yeah, some of it's like intriguing. Some of it's like, mm-hmm. wow, I wonder what you were saying there. It's like, no, 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 the brain room is The awfulness. brain room? <laughs> yeah, we can't talk about what happens in the brain room. So what immediately the after, brain stays, stays in the brain, in the brain room. room. So immediately after those two full paragraphs of redaction comes this paragraph. Fox continued to broadcast its lies about Dominion as it nervously eyed Newsmax. In a November 16th email, Rupert Murdoch told Scott to read a Wall Street Journal piece about Newsmax, telling her, These people should be watched, if skeptically. Trump will concede eventually, and we should concentrate on Georgia, helping any way we can. We don't want to antagonize Trump further, but Giuliani taken with a large grain of salt. Everything (laughs) at stake here. It's so funny. (laughs) Um... The paragraph for them. Yeah, what a hard time. So the paragraph that follows this is also redacted. And immediately after all that redaction comes this line. Carlson told his producer, Alex Pfeiffer, that night, Sidney Powell is lying. Fucking bitch. (gasps) (laughs) It's so good. Struggling. (laughs) Having a rough one, huh, buddy? Letting it out. He continues to complain about this regularly up to November 18th when he ter- tells Laura Ingram that Powell is crazy and Ingram responds, Sydney is a complete nut. No one will work with her. Ditto Rudy. Carlson responds. <laughs> Holy shit. Check this out. Carlson responds. It's unbelievably offensive to me. Our viewers are good people and they believe it. <laughs> why do they believe it, Tucker? <laughs> why, why do they believe yeah. it, Tucker Carlson? Why do Carlson? good people believe it? Mm -hmm. Let's take it a step further, man. Yeah. It's so weird. There's almost like a schizophrenic quality to reading through this because there's this mix of like Carlson responding the way a a regular person should. This is unbelievably offensive. It's fucked up. Mm -hmm. But also like you're doing it, Tucker. Like, yeah, it's so it's it's like it's like look what they're making me do kind of stuff. Like, look the situation I'm in and what I have to do. Because obviously... But I respect the audience so much. They're such good people, but I have to. No, they respect what the audience means for his bottom Mm -hmm. line. Uh, But again, it's just... uh, Not surprising in any way, but you know, an inability, psychologically incapable of seeing any accountability. No. No, absolutely not. Nightmare to be married to. Tucker, you're doing it. You're doing it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, Tucker, the, the lies have come from inside yeah, the, the you. It's coming from inside you. Right <laughs> this, is, this is entirely yeah. your fault, Tucker Carlson. But you know what's not, what isn't Tucker Carlson's fault? The joys right. of cooking. That's right. Pre-prepped meals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
that here got at, delivered straight to your no, hello friend. I, 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 bet I, mm-hmm. I bet I can make it. We could find a, a case for how that's his yep. fault. But no, you know, he not. actually, you get this your is very take exciting. Hot dogs delivered straight yeah. to your door. Very exciting. Yum, yum, yummy. We've got a couple of sponsors. We've got a food box company and a mattress company sponsoring us. And as a result, we're now offering our listeners for a limited time a mattress completely stuffed with tacos. A taco Ooh. mattress. Mm-hmm. Unrefrigerated, no preservatives. Um, it'll it, uh, Just a, a larger quantity of food than you can eat stuffed in a mattress that you have to cut open to get the food out. Does this benefit you in any way? Does it do nothing but cause problems for you? Yes, of course. Just like Fox News. So <laughs> <laughs> use well, promo code. Promo code, yeah. I would like yeah. a pile of rancid tacos stuck inside my mattress. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be back in a minute. So, (laughs) on November 18th, SVP of Primetime Programming and Analytics, Ron Mitchell, sends a message to underlings, R.E. Newsmax. The lack of any meaningful editorial guidance may be a positive for them, at least in the short term. For example, last night on Stitchfield at 8 p.m., the show sourced websites like Gateway Pundit while talking about voter fraud. This type of conspiratorial reporting might be exactly what the disgruntled FNC, Fox News Corporation, viewer is looking for. Mitchell concluded that viewers are watching less Fox News and suggested fixes. Do not ever give viewers a reason to turn us off. Every topic and guest must perform. No unforced errors in content. Example, abruptly turning away from a Trump campaign press conference. <laughs> yeah. Give them what That's they how want. you run a news Give network. them the slop that they <laughs> yeah, want. Yeah. Yeah. Feed the piggies. Oh, yeah. Gobble, gobble. Oh, gobble, so. gobble. Keep fucking God. people's relatives up. This so, how yeah. You ruin bring down a society to its knees it sure is <laughs> it sure is so um yeah following this guidance on november 19th fox broadcast the entirety of a press conference with rudy giuliani and Sidney powell now <laughs> you guys probably all remember this as the press conference where rudy's hair melted off of his face i do Sorry. i remember that <laughs> oh, what an beautiful what an incredible moment for this country made yeah. up it's ai art it, it was I, it's a lie it didn't happen I, 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 I want to be like frozen so that a thousand years from now I can help journalists make a documentary about America. And I want to cut straight from like the <laughs> battlefield at Gettysburg, thousands of corpses, a nation fighting with its past in order to like finally write like the evil at the center of its existence and cut immediately from that to like Rudy Giuliani with his hair melting off just leaking just, from his skull yeah, just leaking from his skull yeah, like, nothing else is important we can cut the out. rest of American history between those moments from Gettysburg <laughs> to Sidney <laughs> Powell and Giuliani the two most pivotal mm-hmm. uh, points in American yeah. history absolutely mm-hmm. no question yeah um, I, I, a I have a detour at four seasons t- Total landscape. Sure, sure, we can throw that in there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we we might even be like morally obligated to have a little detour into Four Seasons Total Landscaping. Um, Okay, I'm going to play a a little segment from that uh, from that clip because I know a lot of people enjoyed Rudy's head melting, but Mm. I think fewer people actually like actually uh, listen to some of the claims being made. Um, This is a particularly uh, powerful moment from that press conference. And I'm going to play it in just a second. Outrageous situation. I don't think most Americans know that our ballots get calculated, many of them outside the United States, and are completely open to hacking, completely open to change. And it's being done by a company that specializes in voter fraud. I'll let you describe that to you. Oh, he does not look well. Also, Sidney Powell is very tall. Yeah, yeah she's tall. and wearing a leopard print mm-hmm. sweater. Real, real school this Interesting vibes. choice. Yeah. What we are really dealing with and uncovering more by the day, massive influence of communist money through Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> started. Interference with our elections here in the United States. The Dominion voting systems, Smartmatic technology software, and the software that goes in other computerized voting systems here as well, not just Dominion, 
were created in Venezuela <laughs> at the direction of Hugo Chavez to make sure he never lost an election. Okay, that's... Oh my God, this is... I, I do love the it's... way she says Venezuela, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah his, uh... His, the crude oil leaking from his brain really distracted <laughs> from the things that she said. Yeah, yeah. The, which uh, it should not have, because it's... Yeah, it yeah. really yeah. shouldn't have. Yeah, because uh, all anybody could talk about Maybe it was a tactic, was maybe it was planned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Rudy is much more cunning than we give him credit for. <laughs> he is, yeah. you know, some species of lizards can shoot blood out of their eyes to like uh, d distract an attacker. Rudy is able to do that to the entire nation <laughs> with his head yeah, yeah, oil. Exactly. He's, he's <laughs> developed it over millions of years. Yeah. So over he's himself with a symbiote. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, no, let's do, the, do my little trick. This is how Rudy's Giuliani have managed to survive <laughs> at the fringes of the world for the last 65 million years since the death of the rest of their race. I consider Rudy to be the same species as the dinosaurs in the original Mario movie. Mm -hmm. You know, the one with oh, uh, Bob Hoskins. My goodness. Y you could just yes. put Rudy in that movie and he would, oh, he yeah. would fit out immediately. The same way sure he dresses. he wasn't in that movie? <laughs> not, not entirely. We don't know. We just don't know. <laughs> so while this beautiful, beautiful scene was unfolding, Rupert Murdoch sent out an email with the subject, watching Giuliani, exclamation point. The text of that email? Real, really crazy stuff and damaging. <laughs> <laughs> if only you had the power to stop this, Rupert Murdoch. Uh, oh, it's like watching a train crash, and also you have the Superman like ability to stop any object right. in motion with the, with a moment's notice. It's the trolley problem, <laughs> but there's one track. Yeah, it's the, tro it's the trolley the problem, but you're God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's very funny. Oh. White, ha White House correspondent Kristen Fisher did at least fact check some of the claims made during this press conference. Her boss. Brian Boynton called her and told her emphatically that he and his bosses were unhappy with her and that she quote needed to do a better job of and this is a quote respecting our audience Fisher texted a colleague about being punished for doing my job shortly thereafter real real lions eating faces party moment oh, oh no seriously. I like that this is their phrase that's yeah. the way they're respecting our audience. I know we've yeah. covered this, but yeah, yeah, lie yeah. to our audience. It's very fun. It's also like you get these people like Kristen Fisher who is like, well, it's good that you were doing your job as a journalist, but also like you did work at Fox. <laughs> like you did choose to work right. there. Yeah, this isn't the first thing. <laughs> Yeah, like a qu first questionable move that they've yeah. made. Yeah, you you didn't have a long career there without any kind of moral qualms. Mm. This is just like happened to be the time that there were a bunch of depositions. Uh, maybe this is the only bad thing they've ever done. Maybe this is the only bad thing they've ever done. That's yeah. possible, we Cody. We don't know. We just can't know. <clears throat> so the fact that there was regular spirited resistance within Fox to the increasingly unhinged Dominion conspiracy is very compelling to me. At one point, Fox anchor Dana Perino comments that Dominion would probably be able to sue over the comments made in that press conference. This prompts CEO Suzanne Scott to send an email saying, you can't give the crazies an inch right now. They are looking for and blowing up all appearances of disrespect to the audience. Mm -hmm. Scott separately Wait. noted, the audience feels like we crapped on them and we have damaged their trust and Belief in us. We can fix this, but we cannot smirk at our viewers any longer. I'm not positive what is being argued for here. <laughs> She's saying, like, we, we can't give the crazies at Fox an inch right now. They're looking for, oh, like, any, any opportunity to, like, blow shit up. But also, yeah. the audience feels like we're shitting on them when we correct this stuff, and that's damaged their trust. So we gotcha. have to... It's, it's again, the every, they're, it's they're, they're being pulled. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's this impossible situation because you're evil. Like, <laughs> you know, right, it's, it's impossible you're evil, but you don't want to be. Your yeah. choices <laughs> yeah. and the scenario that you've created mm -hmm. that you know is bad, but you also yeah. need in order to continue. Like, yeah, it's like the, the crew of the Hindenburg got themselves into an impossible situation when they exploded. <laughs> like, right. We don't want to explode, <laughs> and yet we love this explosive thing. What a what a what an impossible don't situation. Respect the explosion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Respe respect. We we're not respecting the audience if we don't explode properly. Um, the audience being hydrogen. So 
Internally, Fox executives like Ron Mitchell laughed at the clowns, Rudy and Sidney, who had put us in a terrible place. He even asked a colleague jokingly if Sidney was going to mention the, quote, international crime conspiracy to steal the election featuring Soros, Maduro, Chavez, Antifa, Cuba, and China. It's noted in the conversation that, silly as these allegations are, they put Fox in an awkward place where we're going to need to thread the needle. Uh, you're actually not in an awkward mm. place. You don't have no. to be. It's okay. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do this. Yeah, nobody's making you do you don't this. Have to. It's right. okay. You can help. Yeah. You can make things better. On November 20th, Dominion sends Fox's general counsel a cease and desist. Internally, executives fretted over how reckless it was to keep giving Powell air, but she continued to guest regularly on Fox primetime shows, including Dobbs and Hannity that same day. This continued into December. On December 2nd, Bill Salmon, Fox's DC editor, messaged a colleague. It's remarkable how weak ratings make good journalists do bad things. Mm. Oh, Oh, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Mm. I might, yeah, I I, I, I quibble with that. But by late November, even (laughs) some of the bad journalists at Fox were expressing a fear of where the recklessness might lead. Suzanne Scott said, Privately, I had a number of conversations with Sean where he wanted the president to accept the results. And Hannity had understood that Joe Biden legitimately won the election for some time. He admits this in his deposition, too. On November 19th, after the Giuliani Powell press conference, Carlson very carefully tried to thread his own needle. On one hand, he said publicly on his show that what Powell was describing would amount to the single greatest crime in American history, but she never sent us any evidence, despite a lot of requests. On the other, however, he did not say that he, what he believed privately, that she was lying. Instead, he closed by saying, maybe Sidney Powell will come forward soon with details on exactly how this happened and precisely who did it. We are certainly hopeful that she will. And this is the most minimal pushback you could mm-hmm. get on this. Still too much for Fox viewers. The motion, citing internal Fox communications, notes that there was a massive viewer backlash to Carlson on this, which forced caused him to mobilize with Raj Shah from the brand team. Shah messaged a number of executives, including Lackland Murdoch and Suzanne Scott, about this, but we don't know precisely what was said because the next full page or so is redacted. Wow. Um, Oh, Again, super curious as to what was said there. <laughs> um, when the black bars end, we come to this. Shaw also texted with producer Alex Pfeiffer. On November 22nd, Shaw wrote, Shit is so crazy right now. So many people openly denying the obvious that Powell is clearly full of it. Pfeiffer, she is a fucking nutcase. Now, November 22nd is the day that Trump finally disavows Powell noting that she did not represent his campaign. This appears to have been on the behest of Tucker Carlson, who messaged Ingram that day that dealing with Powell totally wrecked, he spells it R-E-C-K-E-D, my weekend. Then he says, this is Tucker. Wow, I had to try to make the White House disavow her, which they obviously should have done long before. Ingram responds, no serious lawyer could believe what they were saying. Carlson replies, but they said nothing in public. Pretty disgusting. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's disgusting that they didn't say it in public. Oh, it's also interesting because the White House does disavow Powell after this. Like Carlson, that's just kind of evidence of the amount of pull that he does have. Mm -hmm. Um, January 6th came as a surprise uh, to everyone involved at Fox, at least based on what the uh, discovery documents suggest. Uh, It seems to have done something to set up a sense of stakes for guys like Carlson, but he was still too afraid of losing his audience to reverse course. Late on January 6th, Carlson texted with Pfeiffer that Trump is, quote, a demonic force, a destroyer, but he's not going to destroy us. On January 26th, Carlson invited his leading sponsor, Mike Lindell, on the show, where Lindell spouted these same conspiracies on air after previewing them for Carlson staff during a pre-interview. And again, this dichotomy between the almost panicked awareness of how much trouble they're getting into by defaming Dominion and like inciting an insurrection, it it exists on every level of decision making at Fox. And the last quote I'm going to read you from this motion is this. On January 5th, Rupert Murdoch told Suzanne Scott, it's been suggested our primetime three should independently or together say something like, the election is over and Joe Biden won, and that such a statement would go a long way to stop the Trump myth that the election is stolen. Scott forwarded the email to Cooper, stating, I told Rupert privately that they are all there. We need to be careful about how using the shows and pissing off the viewers, but they know how to navigate. Um, They did not know how to navigate, uh, (laughs) and in fact refused to. But it's interesting that they were aware as as it's this suggests that Murdoch is aware, like we do have some sort of duty 
to mm-hmm. use our reach to try and quash this um, might be seen as like evidence of uh, uh, guilt. Um, yeah, I mean, they're not unaware. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting what lines they I mean, but again, you're saying like they didn't do it. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they didn't do it. It's not the line is like <sighs> considering doing something. Yeah, about it, I guess. Anyway, that's where we are, folks. That was a real treat. It Robert. was a treat, wasn't it? Wasn't I'm it, Katie? I'm so honored you invited me. I loved it. This. I yeah. felt good about it. Do you mm-hmm. feel good? I feel great feel about, about it. it. That's good. I mean, that's I don't. Good. I don't feel great about it, it's but I change a lot of people's minds. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing, right? That's what pisses me off most about it. Is like, oh, here it is, objective proof from the mouths of the people who run and are the main ho- faces on Fox that they are liars and they are lying to their audience and they are like doing it out of a pure cowardly venal desire for money and fame um, and care nothing about the degree to which they mislead people really. And it will never matter because facts, it's impossible to convince anyone with facts. You put this yeah. in front of yeah. a well, person who watches like the, yeah. the tiny little morsel, right? Of uh, here's well, Tucker here. He is saying that like he needs evidence for it. So he did push back. Like that's the game that they, try to play and sometimes succeed at there's enough like you can see people running cover for them already of like well no he did it's he said it um without acknowledging anything else it's very frustrating i mean it's it's this thing where like i don't know i shouldn't say it doesn't matter at all because we just had this very shocking like midterm upset where like I, maybe maybe we're coming to like ahead of how much they can get away with. I guess we'll know after 2024. Right. But um, it does. I, I do know that like the people in my own life who have been listening to watching Fox religiously for years, this won't stop them. This will right. not have any right. impact. Yeah. And, and like and they're not dumb people, nor are they bad people. It just they have gotten bored into their reality tunnel and the the like like digging into this, acknowledging the degree to which they've just been manipulated for their viewership uh, would be, I think, psychically painful. Um, So why? Why would you do it? It's hard to accept. We see it all the time. The people that still are on the Q train, you know, like having a hard time accepting uh, the facts. But also. I would imagine that there's a lot of people who straight up don't even know this story. <laughs> like, yeah. Like Fox News viewers that mm-hmm. will, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. get this information because it's not like this is going to be a breaking news segment on Fox News, you know. Yeah. Anywho. I want to read more of their texts. So I know. do I. Give me the redacted parts. Yeah. I, I would like some of that too. There's a lot of very enticing pieces. But what's more enticing is y'all's pluggables. Oh, that's very true. Wow. You start, Cody. Check us out on YouTube.com slash the search bar and type in some more news for our uh, video channel. We do videos and stuff. It's a podcast, too, if you like podcasts. Speaking of podcasts, we also have another podcast in that same podcast feed called Even More News. You go to that feed, you'll see both of them in there. One episode will be the audio of the YouTube show. Another one will be us chatting with with each other and people about the news. Mm. Also, we have a Patreon. Dot com. Slash. Some more news. Wow. God, I it's we- you. You guys really are a well-oiled gazelle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are. Mm-hmm. We get that mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We get the oil mm-hmm. from Rudy's skull. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's, you know, that's where we need to invade next is Rudy Giuliani's <laughs> fort. Yeah. <laughs> Send the 10th convey. Mountain Division in there. Get it all. Get it all that fuel. It really, really uh, helps out right now. Um, this has been fun, though. Somebody needs to cut, like, um, I don't know, use an AI or something to, like, cut him into X Files whenever there's one of the aliens that have, like, the black oil coming out of there. Oh. <laughs> just, yeah, can yeah, someone just, please do that? Yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody make Rudy into an alien super soldier on, like, season six of the X Files. I feel like someone will. Yeah, yeah. I could always. Thank you, that person. Thank you in advance. Yeah, finally, I we'll all get to live it. our dream of seeing Rudy star mm. opposite David Duchovny. And that's a good note to end on. Behind the Bastards is a production of Cool Zone Media. For more from Cool Zone Media, 
visit our website, coolzonemedia.com, or check us out on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.